Air Link is a great way to play PC VR titles on your Quest 2 without having the hassle of a cabled native PC VR headset. In this video I wanted to show you some of the titles which are only available in VR on the PC platform that you can enjoy using this method. So let's take a look. Immersed Robot Ok so first up is Fallout 4 VR. Now I could have also included Skyrim in this list but uh, that is available in VR on PlayStation so I decided just to include Fallout 4. Now part of the attraction of VR for me is the open worlds. I love exploring open worlds and some of my favourite games are these huge open worlds within virtual reality that are presented in this way where you can go anywhere and do anything. And Fallout 4 in spite of having a few problems really is very easily moddable and you can get this up and running and it performs reasonably well through Airlink as well. So this is footage of me playing and although you know it's dropping frames it still felt pretty smooth within the headset and it looks great as well. So I can highly recommend you try Fallout 4 if you've got a decently specced PC and a lot of the games on this list will actually require quite a high spec PC to get the best out of them although by lowering settings you can probably get these games running fine on a mid-range VR PC as well. Next up is Half-Life Alex. Now this one sort of goes without saying really. This is almost essential to try if you've got a Quest 2 and a suitably specced PC as well. I almost hesitated putting this one on the list because it's so obvious it, it almost didn't need mentioning. But just for the fact that I did try this in Airlink and it did work pretty well actually, um, I wanted to include it for anybody that has any doubt whatsoever really. Um, but yeah, Half-Life Alex is a fantastic game, well worth the money. It looks great, it performs pretty good as well overall and uh, it's just a great single player experience I highly recommend this one. Okay next is Asgard's Wrath and this was one of the first games that I tried using Airlink actually and just incidentally if you've only got a Quest 1 you can play all of these games in the same way using virtual desktop. That unfortunately isn't an option for Airlink at the moment but you never know hopefully Oculus will bring that feature across to the Quest 1 as well if they can do it. But Asgard's Wrath is a great game, runs really well through Airlink and it's just a nice adventure and it's sort of, it's not really an open world at least as far as I've seen yet but there's plenty of areas that you can go to and it's just a nice single player adventure so I can highly recommend this I've not finished it I've not even got too far through it but I can tell from what I've played so far that um, it's a great game really well designed and it runs fantastically well through Airlink 2 so it's another big recommend from me on this one this one won't come as any surprise to anybody that's watched the channel before but Elite Dangerous in VR is a fantastic game and highly recommended that people try this in VR using Airlink. It works really well, there is no noticeable latency whatsoever. If you want to play it with a HOTAS, a hands-on throttle and stick, then it works great too. And of course you've not got the cable, not that this game actually benefits too much from that aspect because it's a seated experience, but you know it's always nice to have that extra layer of freedom. The game works really well with Airlink I've got to say. Um, I really enjoyed my time in there and uh, another big recommend. I can't recommend this one highly enough. Subnautica is another one I wanted to include in this list although it's not one that I've played too much of in all honesty. I've played a little bit and I really enjoyed it but I know that I've heard from so many different people that this is a, an incredible experience so I think it's important to include it in the list because it is one of the top games that uh, people will mention and it's only available to play in virtual reality on the PC platform so this is definitely one worth trying I would say and from the little I've played I really do enjoy it. the graphics look incredible it's just got this nice level of freedom as well that you get when you're playing this game you know swimming all around discovering new places and that kind of stuff so I've not got too much to say on this one from a personal level but um, from the recommendations and from what people say about this game then I can recommend it as standard it's a gamepad based game so that's one thing it's not quite got going for it but there are various mods that you can add on to make the VR experience better as well so you can look into that separately but as is I tried this with Airlink this is the footage I'm showing here and it worked straight off the bat and it looked fantastic so yes this is definitely another one to check out 
Now I wanted to include a racing game in this list and the one I settled on was uh, Project Cars 2 and this is one of my favourite races but there are plenty others I could recommend equally really. Um, Dirt Rally 2.0, that's a great game too, as is something like Assetto Corsa, although the implementation of VR in Assetto Corsa it struggles a little bit in terms of menus, they're not accessible through virtual reality. So that's why I really stuck with Project Cars 2. One of my favourite races and it looks fantastic, it performs really well. I will say that when I played it very briefly uh, just testing Air Link on it I did get occasional compression artifacts that would pop up occasionally but that was probably more down to my network issues than uh, Air Link or the game itself so but yeah it's still worth checking out and it performs really well and looks incredible. And finally on this list is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, anybody that watches this channel will know that I'm a fan of this game. Now, playing this game through Air Link just on standard settings and just straight off the bat, the performance was not very good at all actually on my PC. But there are numerous ways to tinker with this game and get it running smoothly on the Quest 2 through Air Link. And there are numerous channels that will show you how to do this. So uh, somebody who appears with me on the Next Dimension podcast occasionally, VR Flight Flight Sim Guy, he does some guides on how to get this game running in various capacities on various headsets and he looks into the Quest 2 as well. So this is one which I did hesitate putting on the list only because as great as the game is it needs some tweaking and it won't perform great just straight off the bat. So this is one for anybody that enjoys sort of tinkering and really dialing in performance on the game but once you do that then you'll you know reap the rewards in terms of the experience it offers. It's a fantastic game but it does require a little bit of work to get it running correctly. Okay, so just very quickly before I go, I did want to make some honourable mentions that didn't quite make this list, and that was only because I didn't have time to test them before making the video. So I've only included games within this list that I have personally tested using Airlink. But the other honourable mentions that I wanted to go through is Lone Echo, of course, one of my favourite VR games, science fiction, narrative based, an excellent little story, an excellent little adventure to go through, which I would class as almost essential uh, among you know PC VR only titles. There is a of course the ones that I briefly mentioned as well, Dirt Rally 2.0, Seto Corsa. There is also another flight sim called DCS World which is, you know, it's free to play and you can try that in Air Link as well. I, again, personally I haven't tried it but that's another great flight sim that I hear many good things about. Then there are titles which I have played quite a lot of, things like The Gallery Episode 1 and 2. Now these are fantastic games by Cloudhead, short single player narrative experiences which I personally really do enjoy so there are some others to look at. There's Boneworks as well, I guess um, you know I, I can't disclude Boneworks, it's not really, I do have some frustrations with Boneworks but I recognise it as being you know sort of a pioneer in some respects for virtual reality gaming so it's worth definitely worth trying that one out and finally Brass Tactics, an uh, incredible game, real-time strategy, you know, very not too deep in all honesty, but it's by the creators of Age of Empires and it works really well. It's very polished and it's just a great experience from start to finish. It's generally leaning towards multiplayer, but you can play a sort of uh, skirmish in single player as well. So I do highly recommend all of these titles. And if you've got a Quest 2, a suitably specced PC, then there's no reason not to give these games, uh, you know, a try at the very least. Some of them are among my favorite VR titles ever so um, yeah per from a personal level I can highly recommend them. But that's pretty much it for this video thank you for watching and please do take a moment to subscribe if you like this kind of VR focused content and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel The Memory Engine, a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaverse, available on Amazon Kindle, paperback and as an audible audiobook. Links in the description to this video.